That was fabulous, man. That was beautiful. <laughs> must have been. I don't know about it. Well, it's exciting. Great every time I look at the camera.
He moved. He moved to the right. He moved to the right. Yes, he definitely moved to step. He, he slid, but he didn't call the ball. Game and match. His right foot slid. Rain 16. Because it wasn't flagged. Ah. Well, it seemed like Albert Apuzzi, with his stamina, won the game. Okay, Fred was a little jittery. Okay, Carl, but is, okay. isn't it true that Fred had not attacked Albert's flaws? I mean, Albert on, on the run can make errors. Albert, if he stands still, is going to kill you, and he let him stand still for... Well, he did a number of things. Uh, Albert doesn't like a high game. Right. I think Fred would have had a better chance hitting the ball high, high volleys. Yeah. Once he lowered the ball, it played right into Apuzzi's hand. And again, like you say, Apuzzi's a form player. And on the move, he doesn't do as well as the ball being hit right at him low. Yeah, right. So that was the turning point again. As far as the serve, Apuzzi's serve is always over the short line. If Freddie would have moved in, in front of the long line, he probably would have picked up and diverted Apuzzi's uh, strategy. Of ace, ace, ace. I said the same thing. He, he should have moved in about three steps and anticipated. Anytime someone's scoring on you continuously, you have to change them from that position. Yeah. And it's usually your position that's causing the problem. So move in, move left side, move right side, do anything. You can always move back to the same position. Had you had a sense that Fred had a strategy? No. He seemed to go in there with no idea of how to attack him. Again, he's what we call, he swings his arm and he hopes it goes. He made so many shorts, again, if he just lifted up a little, those would have been aces. How many points do you think it, it counts to have an attack, a, a, a strategy? Well, again, strategy is 70% of the game. You start out feeling the guy out like a boxer. And then you have to develop a plan, and you alter the plan as the game goes on. You see what someone's acing you, short, just over the short line, you move in. If he's got you on the left side, you move over. Are you frustrated as a former player if you see somebody who is not reacting, he's not responding, he's not adapting? Well, again, I, I was standing next to Al Torres. He has a strategy, I have a strategy, Ruth has, Sandal has a strategy, but you'd like to see the best with the equipment that they have. Yeah. And if they're not utilizing it, you get frustrated. It is frustrating, isn't it? Sure. You want, you want them to play their best game, and then everybody will be happy. Yeah, well, I was, I was kind of uh, frustrated. A few guys on the sidelines were frustrated. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Carl. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Eric, uh, Corman, how did you like that game, Eric? Which game? Uh, uh, the one that we just saw. Oh, Albert played great. Yeah. Albert played really good. I'm glad I wasn't playing him. <laughs> but how did you feel about the, the lack of strategy on Fred's part? He didn't seem to know how to attack Albert. Well, Freddie couldn't get his hands on the ball. Albert's serve was too much. Yeah. I mean, you can't have strategy when you can't touch the ball. Right. If you would have play Albert, how would you attack him? Um, I probably would have leaned a little more over to the left side of the court on the serve, yeah. take away that angle, right, and then pray he misses. <laughs> That's about it. Right, right, right. A, yeah, but if he runs, he tends to miss more, no? I, I really don't know. I don't, I don't analyze this game to that extent. Okay. Can I ask you this? How did, how did it feel to be... Uh, how, how did it feel to beat Joe Durso? Felt all right. Felt pretty good. But had you been, uh, you know, you know, I mean, he is an immensely talented player. Had, had you been surprised? Or, uh... I wasn't surprised. In one wall, anything can happen. That's true. You get a good serve going, you can beat anybody. He seemed to let you go at 10-4. Uh, he kind of tapped the ball up. Do you think that was so uh, wise? <laughs> Hey, he, I don't know. I guess not. I mean, I can't tell you. He's, right. the, he's the champ. You right. know? Could you tell us the courts that you normally play at, Eric? The what? The courts that you normally play at? I play 
four walls in New York AC normally. Right. right over there. And, 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 and do you prefer the four wall game or the one wall game? Uh, four wall in fall, winter, and spring, one wall in the summer. Yeah. All right, because it's great to be out there in the sun and to get that uh, that uh, primeval experience, right? That's right. Okay, is, is there a kind of a difference between the kind of player that you are and John Bike is and, and that Angel is and Emmett is? I mean, is, is there a kind of a class structure here, a kind of a mythic class structure going on? Um, the, the differences between John Bike and Angel are tremendous, even though their game was decided by one point. John is, is like a, a, the, fi the finest trained athlete that I think this country has, uh -huh. um, but he doesn't know the one wall game at all. Angel is a, is a, is about the smartest street one wall player in, in town, and that that's what won over. Yeah, but it was pretty close. I mean, it could have gone either way. Exactly. Yeah. Shows you how much one wall you have to know to, to compete with the best. Yeah. John doesn't know any. Is he picking up on? He's been doing it for two years now. No, he plays once a year every year at the, at the nationals. That's all. Okay. Um, Angel has a tremendous ferocity, and you see it on the outside, whereas John is on, it, it's in the inside. Uh, 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 I mean, he doesn't seem to get angry or anything like that. He doesn't stomp around the court or anything like that. John's been in, in easily many more pressure matches than anyone else out here. He's uh -huh. used to it. Okay, well, thank you very much, Eric. Thanks. Here. Matt, Matt, stand right, right over there. Bob Peters, you stand right over oh. here. Mother, really? Uh, Albert, you stand right over here. We can tell we're going to come in in a second. Right. Hold on one second. Smile. Thank you all for coming down today. This is the United States Handball Association National Championship. And it has a very long tradition from 1924 all the way up to the present day. And we welcome you all here because you are part of this great tradition. And we also want you to know that today is a special day. It happens to be Memorial Day where we honor our men and women who made this country free so that we all can come down here in peace and calm to watch the greatest athletes that you will ever see any place. And so now we want to make this presentation. We have Bob Peters, the National Commissioner from the United States Handball Association, he came all the way from Tucson, Arizona, just to be with us today, to let you all know that one wall is as important as three wall and four wall, and he has promised us, as he has in the past, and he has delivered to make one wall handball just as great as the other games that we enjoy. He will make the formal presentation to our great champions. One is Freddie Sylvia over here, who played singles and doubles for four days, and he played magnificently. And Rudy Rudell will give the second place plaque to Bob Peters, who will make the presentation. Thanks, Rudy. On behalf of our president, Carl Porter, handball fans all over, my privilege and pleasure present the second place trophies and Fred Now what I want you all to think about is that tournaments like this just don't happen. We've had people working on this tournament for many months. We've added new divisions. We have the largest turnout that we've ever had. And the committee, Gil Handler is the chairman. He's ably assisted by Mr. Rudy Rudell, Elliot Nadell, Paul Williams, who's doing tremendous work with the inner city kids. He's traveled to all the boroughs putting on tournaments to make our game grow, because without the youth of America, it won't grow. Now, the important thing I'm going to tell you right now is, if you happen to be a player and you happen to win a championship, and you happen to be an administrator spending countless hours making sure everything works, I want you to think very deeply about this next statement. 
The person I am going to announce now is not only a three-time champion as of today, he's an eight or nine-time doubles champion, and I want you to give a tremendous round of applause to his administration, Albert Apuzzi. out here, many of you silently contributing to our cause, making everything work, like Holly taking the photographs, and Bill Fan taking the photographs, and Abe Mantell taking pictures, and this gentleman here, most of all, our cam man for Channel 16, Manhattan Cable TV, Matthew Paris. Give him a special hello. And I truly apologize if I have not announce somebody here, but as time goes by and as years go by, something very beautiful happens. You know, we mature. I remember I used to be a kid with dark hair. Uh -oh. <laughs> I drink the Grecian formula. My brother Carl says I'm supposed to put it on my hair. <laughs> but from time to time, in order to honor some special folks who make their silent contribution to this game, we select somebody every year. And today's recipient is a young kid, he's probably in his mid-80s, always playing handball, always a smile on his face. And with that, we're going to make this special award, the Silver Goblet, the Silver Goblet, as a symbol for this great man who over the years always helped us silently, Harry Levy. I certainly appreciate this very much, and I'm very honored by it. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Who's going to be equally on it with Harry? I saw him on Brighton Beach Avenue. He was walking with his wife, and I don't think it looks good that he'll be here. But he will also receive a silver goblet. His name is Sammy Eisenhower. You all know him. Now we're going to start our finals of the ladies. Our defending champion, Dory Ten from this court, and her opponent will be Barbara. Canton. She never entered a tournament before. She is now in the finals. I hope you stay with us and enjoy the magnificence of the girls as they play. Rudy Riddell will make the presentation to our grand champion, Albert Apuzzi. And there's just one. If I don't do this, I'm going to get a beating. If I'm going to get a beating. When I was growing up, he always gave me the extra food. I turned out to be taller than he was. My beautiful brother, Carl, many times national champion. Now, we're going to walk off. Albert, he just took his victory swim. And let's give him all a big round of applause. Well, uh, Albert played great the first game. Right. Very good. He